Hi. Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope today. We're going to have a conversation with John Lennon in the afterlife. Oh, if you look back, John Lennon has a playlist. So you can see when I initially channeled him a couple of years ago, kind of watch some of those other videos if you choose to do that. Today, I chose John Lennon because I thought there is an energy of peace that is what I associate with him and also the energy of his iconic status and the energy of peace sometimes seems a little like there's friction there and trying to be a human being and be spiritual and then also live in the public eye seems like something that's very daunting and could then provide us with a great deal of insight. So I think it would be great to have John Lennon come in and speak about our times now as I am recording this video in 2022, February 2022. All right, let's bring him in. All right, I see him in his round glasses. Yeah, I have the word imagine behind me. <laughs> I just literally went, oh yeah. <laughs> It's always up here. It's been up in many videos, and I just imagine. Oh, okay. He says, you know what that song was about? Do you know what that song was about? What it was really about? Hmm. I guess, to me, it was about peace. He says, yes. But more about as an individual, the contributions that you can make, that we, as one person, can make. He's showing like a pebble in the pond and the ripples. And he says, the energy understanding of this is extremely important now. So might I say this song, Imagine, was written for these times that you are living in. I don't regret my passing and the timing of my death. I don't feel or spend time dwelling on that whether or not it was too soon or fair or just. I just, I allow myself now to be in servitude as a spirit, amplifying the love, the grace, and the vibrational resonance. of the energy of love and the profound peace that I have now found in Ascension. He feels like a master a bit, you guys, like a master teacher. Like he feels like he spends, the vibe that I get from him is like a lot of time in meditation. Mm -hmm. And that he's focused on the Ascension path. How are you reincarnated? I don't feel like he is. It doesn't feel like he is. He's showing me Yoko a lot. Like I feel her, like she speaks to him and he speaks to her and through her. And whether they've directly communicated with a medium to do that or not, I'm not sure. I get the feeling that she early on had psychic and spiritual experiences on her own. And I feel like there's almost like medication that's used or medicine that's used at time, medicinal um, things. It could be actually like marijuana or um, other types of of altering substances to be able to get her into a state to be able to do that. However, feels like her heart was very much broken when he died. And so there's this, um, I personally, as far as healing goes, respect that and feel the energy of the, her own individual grief process. But now it feels like she can be much more expanded and like open, like a big lotus flower. And he shows me a big red rose. I say lotus. And he shows me a big red rose, which to me connects to the divine feminine, connects to deep love, love that endures. And he gives me the feeling that they're very much still very connected, very, very much so. Okay. And he shows me about some kind of a musical school or a musical society. Um, I don't know if there's like a trust for something like this that's in his name, or if there's some kind of a uh, something. And I see piano. I don't know what that's about, uh, like a musical school or something. He's acknowledging that or he's showing me this. But the desire that I have in order to connect with you today, John, is about the times that we are in and the prophetic energy that you bring in, because it feels like you do have a bit of a prophetic vibration about you. 
And I think energetically, you desire to bring in a new wave of energy into the earth and the planet at this time to support the rest of us who are living the real life, who can't just transcend out of our human lives, the people who are going to work every day and taking care of our children and who are in college classrooms and who are, you know, in the clinics and the hospitals and the people who are you know, at the grocery store that are stocking the shelves and driving the trucks. And just there's just so much contribution in the day-to-day -day work that is happening just to keep us sustained and alive that I think the prophetic nature of your vibration, I think could give us some kind of uh, reassurance maybe. I don't know if reassurance is the right word. We haven't spoken about the pandemic, you and I, so we could talk about that, but I'm, I'm more... Um, interested in understanding what you see or foresee for us as a humanity now during this time. Mm, he says, that's a lot, Bridget, that's a lot. Let us focus on first the crown chakra, the purple energy of light, the transformative healing energy of the violet flame and of multiple ascended masters who have come to the planet before me. He says, I understand the vibration of change and transmutation in addition to the energy that you have called for on the planet now as transformation. He says, there is a transitioning point of earth herself. Yes, and all the humanity that rests upon her is moving to the place in which they choose to move, but all are being up unsettled and uprooted in many contexts. Families are literally being torn apart. And he says, for some transition and change equals death of the body. But the spirit and the ethereal is the place that there is the most abundant growth to encourage the support then of the earthly plane and those who are left here. The, and he shows me farming and farming community and organic food and the nature of the rawness of the soil right now is becoming extremely important and the purity of the food that you are eating and not just the lack of pesticides or toxins in the air or the earth. He says, it's not just that, it is more the vibration through which it is held and carried throughout the system, handed from one hand to another hand to another hand, some just washing and preparing in order to be able to package and send to the market. He says, it is really paramount for you to consider at this time as humanity to either grow your own food or to source from the farmer's markets and the locally sustained farms, because this is going to eliminate the need for, this is gonna allow for longevity of the food because it will be direct to you. And it is also gonna eliminate the need for the toxic vehicles. Like he's showing me like air pollution and the carbon footprints and all that, like the, the literally air pollution from the trucks that are traveling to bring food from one place to another. And he says, it's a shorter distance and it's local. He says, and it, it, it really is essential for your, for the needs of the human body to be able to allow the human body to continue to be able to hold the frequency of the mass that you are made of, the meat mass that you are made of. He says the tangible body it will become more paramount, he uses the word paramount over and over again, to pay attention and be acutely aware of where your food is coming from. Okay, guys, I wanna be really clear, public service message. I'm not really super big into that. Like, I don't know a lot about that. I just know, hey, I go to the farmer's market in the summer um, and I don't have choice in the winter because I have to buy my food at the store. It's, we don't have growth season here kind of thing, but he's like talking about all sorts of things like hydroponics and herb gardens, just simple ways to um, sustain. And then even like things like canning and stuff like that, freezing your food, all that. Um, and he says, it's not for the faint of heart. Yeah, yeah, he's saying it's not, it's not easy. It requires a transition and a transformation as to how you think about things, he says. And um, it is so easy just to go through, through a drive-through. Yeah, he says, yeah. 
but there is a need energetic and vibration for this. And he says, it, for some, there will not be a choice because you're going to, going to find, he says that the body actual, he's saying, this is so weird. I don't know all these terms, molecular structure of the body is going to change so that in order for you to be able to continue to grow and evolve and open spiritually. And he's showing everybody wants to open with their third eye. He's like, that's the new thing. Kind of be showing me the third eye. The heart is already empaths highly sensitive people, people are understanding emotions. That's why there's mental illness awareness and a more acceptance of uh, everybody has forms of anxiety. Everybody has forms of depression. It's becoming more mainstream understanding. And he's showing me that, okay, so yes, the empathic energy, the empathic heart that has been accepted now. And now it is the eye, the third eye, which is the eye of God, he says, or the universal eye, which requires, he said, you to have the ability to be flexible, to move your vibration and shift it pretty with ease. And he says, you can't do that when your body is weighed down by toxins that are given to you by the food that you are eating because the digestion, you are what you eat and you become that. You guys, again, I'm not on a rant about healthy eating necessarily because let's just be clear, I'm not the healthiest eater either. I just had cookies before I came down here. I have water, but I drank coffee this morning. I mean, I don't know, but this is what he's saying. which makes sense because the vibration of our bodies is essential in order to be able to hold intuitive information and to be able to heal ourselves quickly and move through disease or illness, we need to be as um, vibrationally fit as we can be. Okay, so food is like a big deal for him, okay. He says, um, the understanding of the mass death that has occurred on the earth, he says, is by choice of a, by choice, oh, this is, uh, can we choose your words a little bit? Because it's a little tricky because I don't want to get um, too much, I don't want to uh, upset too many people because a lot of people have experienced death a family and things because of COVID. And so I don't wanna like hurt or offend anybody. I'm just, just know that I'm feeling sensitive to that, you guys. But he literally says it's by choice. The death was by choice. And that it was a wave of, he says a wave of, the best word to match is awareness, a wave of awareness. They were not scapegoats. And it was not unplanned. And it was a natural biological call for unity and expansion that transcends the human mind and actually leans into a universal and cosmic consciousness. And he says, actually, advanced being, advanced spirit guides, and advanced knowledge or wisdom. So, like starseed and other planets and that kind of thing. They were aware that this was going to occur on the earthly plane. It was predicted years ago, about, it looks like about 30 years ago. Actually, he says, if you look, if we look back, you guys, it feels like somebody else predicted this like 30 years ago. They predicted this wave, this pandemic that happened and is still in the process of kind of trying to come to a, a plateauing point. Okay, we're close to that, but we're not there yet, he says. And it's like we've cut off the head of the beast, but the beast still lives, is what he's saying. So the, the purging that was expected as a result of this experience has happened to some degree to everyone. Everyone has been affected in some way, shape, or form, even the, the fancy, wealthy, rich, and the, the minimal poor of society. So it had nothing to, it is, it did not escape you based upon your wealth or status. Um, your job may have made you more susceptible. However, he says, um, it is having ramifications far and wide because there needs to be a restructuring and a reordering of things. And he's showing economy wise, like the socioeconomic classes, that stuff has to be changed. And in order for that to occur, this mass death and this plague had to happen. It happened in such a way as to be a catalyst to really shine a light on all the differences between the economic classes and how 
even in advanced societies or civilizations or first world countries, how much of a mess that old structure system was so out of whack. And he says, now there seems to be greater gaps. He said, but it's not greater. He says, that's the thing is the gaps are not larger. You're just, it's just that more people are seeing the gaps, which is exactly what the intention is. And the more people that see, the more people that know, the more people that can do something and change will occur. And eventually, and he says, peace, requires patience and persistence, not patience in the way of non-action, but patience in the way of specific and direct action. And if you want to make a true impact, put your money where your values are. Only buy from companies that you know are sustainable or that have value of people they treat their employees well. They provide insurance, health insurance for their, their employees. They have practices that honor the environment and the communities and people. But they promote or support um, diversity and, and equality and equanimity. Equanimity. As do your research. Don't blindly buy things. Use your money as intention. This is why, by the way, he says most people, a lot of people have problems with money. It's because they see money as this bad thing. this like naughty thing. It's like sweep it under the carpet kind of thing, like a backdoor thing, the money. He says, but money has the power to change and transform and support the change. That is the key. Support the change through you as an individual, peacefully choose with awareness, honor the death of those who have gone in order to create this clear path through obvious awareness in the third eye and the physical human eyes in the third eye. Understanding the change and the need for this at this time and your impact, he says, the pebble in the pond, because it's here and it's now, and it feels so overwhelming. Like he's acknowledging it's a lot. The heart is like way, it's like the dam is gonna break, okay? He acknowledges that, but he says it won't. If you can shift in to the mind state and change and shift the perspectives of the mind, use the third eye and vision a better future by taking the actions that are persistent. Be intentional with your purchases, be intentional with your time and your energy. Be intentional when you eat. Use your body in a way that is profound and, and, and leverages efficiently your power. And keep your mind clear, and food will do that. Keep clarity in the mind so that these gaps that are so obvious don't become, we don't become um, numb to them. That's not the intent. It's not the intent. Okay, wow, that was kind of serious. Okay. Well, okay, that was deep. Anybody else think that was really deep? That was deep. Like, Jonda obviously doesn't know that at Above Life Channel, I like things lighter, right? Like lighter. But sometimes we need to listen. We need to pay attention. Pull, out, pull our heads out of our butts and actually listen to the intuitive guidance that's coming in and not the fear-based crap that some of y'all are listening to, not the, oh my God, everything's bad and this is happening and that's happening and oh my God, the darkness is coming and not that. Why would you listen to that? Listen to the factual, feeling-focused, honored intention of you as a beautiful human with a vibrant spirit and love, amplify the love and empower the peace. Let's do that. Let's focus on that, shall we? Okay. So I'm Bridget, I'm a psychic medium and I'm here every week on Above Life Channel. I'm channeling afterlife celebrity guests to give you insight and to inspire your spirit and fill you with hope. Like we did with John Lennon. Check out his playlist, by the way, at Above Life Channel. Every Monday, you can tune in 
for the afterlife channeling sessions. And on Sundays, I do a Sunday morning coffee with Bridget, which is a podcast I do to inspire your spirit. I take an intuitive topic and I chat with you about it. If you're interested in my work as an intuitive life coach and also as a psychic, you can check me out on my other YouTube channel, Fairy Grasshopper, where I share my vlogs and lots of other videos and information as well for you over there on Fairy Grasshopper. Hey, I hope we have inspired your spirit, filled you with some hope, and uh, maybe encouraged you to live your life. This is your life, after all. You get to live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.